problem is you'll see the autograph is faded off of this card. I accidentally left it uh, on my headboard after we had rearranged my room and it is set in the sun, you know, for a couple years I didn't realize that the sun was hitting it every day and so it faded the autograph but I'm just gonna put it in front of the camera I thought this was kinda cool this is uh, well it used to be in perfect condition but it's really faded now but there's an autographed Brett Favre card and uh, it's it's probably not worth anything because it's been faded out but it, it, it meant a lot to me and so I used to be I used to be a huge Green Bay fan but I will always always be a true True Seahawks fan. So go Seahawks. R's for Russell Wilson. And okay, so P could be what? P could be the President of the United States, for instance. Okay, so I'm just going to say, let's imagine this, okay, this group of 21 letters to represent a group of 21 people. Okay, now out of this group, I want to select three famous people out of this group. I want to select a group of three famous people. So I'm just going to select, let's select Michael Jordan. Let's select the president, and let's select Russell Wilson, for instance. Okay, my question is, how many ways can we select a group of three people out of 21? Okay, and it will blow your mind. Okay, I asked this question a couple videos ago. I said, how many groups of three are there in 21? Uh, and a lot of times I'll get an answer of seven. In fact, this is, this is not even close. Okay, there are actually, it will blow your mind. Okay, there are 1,330 groups of three in 21 people. Okay, and we're going to calculate that in a moment. I'm going to show you how to calculate that. But let's just start with, okay, uh, this group of 21 people. Michael Jordan, I want you to come up to the stage. So Michael Jordan comes up, okay? And uh, President of the United States, Mr. President, would you please come forward? And uh, Russell Wilson, also, come forward. Super Bowl champion, well, we hope, okay? So uh, the Super Bowl's tomorrow, so uh, we're going to be rooting. Uh, Michael Jordan, President, Russell Wilson, they come up here. Okay, so they're standing right here in front of you. Now, my question is, we're talking group. Okay, is this one group or is this many groups? Okay, so if, if the president, Michael Jordan, and Russell Wilson are standing here, does it matter how I rearrange them? Look, let me give you a visual here. So we have Michael Jordan, we have the president, and we have Russell Wilson standing in front of us. Three people. Okay, so three people standing in front of us. Does it matter if Michael Jordan is first, the president is second, and Russell Wilson is third, or if I rearrange them? Let's say I rearrange these. Okay, so let's put Russell Wilson first. Uh, the, the Michael Jordan second and the president third. Does it matter if I rearrange them? Is it still the same group? Okay, we're talking outcome here. Is this one group or is this two different groups? Okay, hopefully you say it does not matter how we rearrange them. It's just what? It's just one group. Okay, so Michael Jordan president, Russell Wilson, or Russell Wilson, Michael Jordan president, it's still the same group no matter how they're standing. I can rearrange them any way I want. Uh, I can put president first, Michael Jordan second, Russell Wilson third. Okay, does it matter how I arrange them? No. This group, this group, this group are all the same group of people, no matter how they are standing. Okay, so we're talking one group here. All right, so now let's look. How many groups of three are there in 21? Now let me just kind of start to here. Let's, let's just, this will blow your mind. Watch, you'll quickly see. So we can have... Uh, MPR, okay, there's a group of three, and is MPR the same as PRM? Yes, okay, so we've established this. So we have MPR, let me pick a different group of three. Could we have MPS? Absolutely, is that a different group? Yes, because I've taken Russell Wilson out, and I've put another person with the name S in here. Could I have MPT? Yes. Could I have MPU? Yes. Okay, now, question, could I have, could I have M-R-S? Yes. Could I have M-R-T? Yes. Could I have M-R-U? Okay, here, could I have, could I have O-M-T? Could I have O-P-T? Could I have O-H-I? Could I have O-J? A. Could I have O, C, D? Okay, so you start to get the concept here very quickly. How many groups of three are there in 21? It will start to blow your mind. There are so many groups of three in 21. It's wow. Okay, there's 1,330. It seems, it seems illogical, but once you start diagramming, you quickly start to see there are a lot of these. Okay, so how do we calculate this? What I want to know is how many groups of three... How many groups of three are there in these 21 people? Okay, what does combination represent? Combination is what? 
group. Okay, so this formula will calculate the number of groups that there are in 21. And I'm going to actually show you how this works in a minute. But let's use the formula. So the way this works, if we want to calculate the number of groups that there are in 21, we're going to take the combination formula, and this is what it, how it's used. Okay, so the first letter, N, is the larger number, and R is the smaller number. So how many total are there in the group? There are 21, so we're going to put 21 first. 21 is your N value, or the number of people in the entire group that you can choose from. R is the number that you're selecting. So we have 21 people total. We are selecting how many? Three. And again, the formula is used like this. Okay, so if you're struggling with the formula, go back to the last video. It's 21 factorial. Okay, again, N goes on top. N goes on top. And on the bottom, we have what? On the bottom, we have our R factorial first, or 3 factorial, multiplied by what? Now subtract the 2. 21 minus 3 is 18 factorial. And this gives 21 times 20 times 19 times, hold on, do we want to write times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15? No, we don't want to write all the way down to times 1. What is the symbol that allows us to save time? Okay, we can just write this as what? 18 factorial. Why are we stopping at 18 factorial? We're stopping at the larger factorial in the denominator. Notice we have an 18 factorial here. So we're going to stop at 18 factorial, and this represents 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 all the way down to 1. And what do we have here? 3 factorial. We're going to take our smaller factorial, write it as 3 times 2 times 1, and then write our 18 factorial. Now, question. Does 18 factorial cancel with 18 factorial? Yes. Is this 18 canceling with 18? No. Okay. From our last video, we saw that this is a trillion canceling with a trillion. Huge number canceling with what? Huge numbers. So huge numbers go away. Trillion canceling with a trillion. Okay. Now we're going to take the smaller factorial, 3 times 2 times 1 and cancel. 3 cancel with 21, leaving what? Divide each by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 21 divided by 3 is 7. Okay. Cancel 2 with 20. Okay. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Okay, we get 7 times 19 is 133 times 10 gives 1,330. There are 1,330 groups of 3 in 21. Okay, whether you have 21 people, there's 1,330 groups of 3 people in 21. Now, what is the difference between combination and permutation? Well, hopefully, again, from the last video, which one is the larger value? Okay. Which one is the large value? Hopefully you say that permutation. Permutation is the big value. Okay, this is much bigger. So let's listen to the difference here. Okay, now I'm going to ask the question. Now I'm going to ask the question, how many ways can I award a first place prize, a second place prize, and a third place prize to the three people out of this group of 21? Okay, so I have to, I want to award first place, second place, and third place to three people out of this group of 21 people. Okay, so what has to happen? There are two things that have to happen. First, we have to select a group. Okay, so first we have to select a group. And after we select a group, we then have to assign what? Position. What am I talking about? Well, we've established how many groups of three are there in 21? I'm sorry, how many groups of three? Yeah, how many groups of three are there in 21? Well, there's 1,330 groups of three in 21. So what I'm going to do is pick a group. Let's just pick a group. Let's go back to the group that we chose before. Let's say we choose, again, Michael Jordan, uh, the President of the United States, and Russell Wilson. Okay, so we have Michael Jordan, President of the United States, and Russell Wilson. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to assign first place, second place, and third place. Okay, now, what is the key word, what is the key word for permutation? Okay, the key word is what? Assignment after selection. So not only do we have to select a group of three people out of the group of 21, okay, and how many ways can three people be selected? Well, hopefully you say 1,330 ways that these three people, you know, that three people can be selected. I mean, there's many, many groups. We could have had what? I, we could have had I, H, J, for instance. I mean, there's 1,330 of these different groups. I chose a specific group, Michael Jordan, the president, and Russell Wilson. Okay, so this specific group of three people. Now what do we have to do? We have to now assign place. First place, second place, and third place. So my question is, is Michael Jordan first, president of the United States second, and Russell Wilson third, different than Michael Jordan first, Russell Wilson second, and the president of the United States third? Yes. Why? Because we have assignment of position within the group. So now we have differences. Notice before I asked, okay, 
We've got President Michael Jordan, and we've got Russell Wilson standing here. Is it a, the same group if I rearrange them? Yes, it doesn't matter how they're standing. It doesn't matter if they have their backs turned. It's the same group of three no matter how they're standing on the stage. But when I start assigning position, a position of first place, position of second place, position of third place, now it's different. Okay, so Michael Jordan first, President second, Russell Wilson third. Is that different than Michael Jordan first? Russell Wilson second, President third. Yes. What other possibilities do we have? Well, we could have what? We could have Russell Wilson first, Michael Jordan second, President third. We could have Russell Wilson first, President second, Michael Jordan third. We could also have, now Michael Jordan's been first, Russell Wilson's been first. We could have the President. We could have the President first, Michael Jordan second, Russell Wilson third. Or we could have the President first, Russell Wilson second, Michael Jordan third. Okay, so notice there are how many ways can we take that one group of three and arrange it? We can take that one group of three and arrange it how many ways? One, two, three, four, five, six ways. And from our counting video, notice we can do this as a dependent case. Okay, there were three people in the group. So how many options were there for first place? Notice we could have had Michael Jordan first, Russell Wilson first, or the president first. There were three options for first place. Now, after we chose first place, how many options did we then have for second place? Notice, after we chose Michael for first, how many options did we have for second place? We had just two. Okay? And after we chose first and second, how many options did we have for third place? We just had one. So this gives three times two times one, or one. Six ways. There are six ways to arrange the group of three. Now follow this. This is one group of three. This is one group of three out of this group of 21. Again. How many groups of three are there in 21 people? Okay. Hopefully you say again, there's 1,330 groups of three in 21. Now, if I pick a specific group of three, that specific group of three can now be arranged how many ways? Six ways. Okay. So let's just go through this. Okay, so I, I pick a group of three. Okay, this group of three can be arranged how many ways? Six ways. I pick another group of three. How many ways can it be arranged? Six ways. I pick another group of three. How many ways can be arranged? Okay, six ways. I should be doing it here. A, here. A, okay, well, A, B, C is a group of three. It can be arranged six ways. A, B, D is a group of three. It can be arranged three ways, uh, or six ways. Uh, if I pick three people, G, H, I, G, H, I can be arranged what? Six ways. Okay, so each group of three can be arranged six ways. Notice, there are 1,330 groups of three. If each group can be arranged six ways, Hopefully you can see that this is multiplication. We can take 1,330 groups. We can take 1,330 groups and multiply by what? 6. 1,330 multiplied by 6 gives, uh, let's see, 0, 18, carry the 1, 19, carry the 1, 7,980. There are 7,980 ways uh, to not only select a group of 3, but arrange first place, second place, and third place prizes among those groups. Now, what is this? This is calculation of permutation. I want you guys to notice similarity in the formulas. What is permutation? Okay, permutation involves permutation involves two things. Okay, first we are selecting a group, then we are assigning positions. So we have to first select a group of three, then we have to assign position of first place second place, and third place within that group of three. So permutation involves not only selection of a group, but also assignment of the position. Okay? Now our formula for permutation, okay, in this case, will be permutation, there were 21 people in the group total, 21 people total, and we are selecting three people. Remember that n is always the larger value, so the larger value goes first. n is the total number that you have to select from. We have 21 people, we're selecting three, and what is this? Well, the formula says put n factorial on top, or 21 factorial over, now subtract the two. 21 minus 3 gives what? 18 factorial. So subtract these two factorial. 21 minus 3 is 18. 18 factorial. We get 21 times 20 times 19. Where are we going to stop? Where are we going to stop? We want to stop at what? 18 factorial, and we want to cancel at the bottom. 18 factorial. Now, question. Does 18 cancel with 18? No. This is not 18 canceling with 18. This is a trillion canceling with a trillion. Huge numbers. And our final calculation here is 20 times 19 times 18. And 20 times 19 times 18 is 7,980. 
Now, I want you to notice similarity. Okay, in this formula, what did we have? We had 20 times 19 times 18. In the combination formula, let's look at the similarity. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. Let's look at the similarity. We had 21. Wait, no. Mess this up. This is 21 times 20 times 19, okay? In the combination formula, we had 21 times 20 times 19 times 18 factorial over 3 factorial, which is, here, I'm just going to leave it as 3 factorial times 18 factorial, okay? And we cancel the 18 factorials, and we're left with 21 times 20 times 19 over 3 factorial. So notice the, you, notice the similarity in the combination formula and the permutation formula. The combination formula has 21 times 20 times 19. The permutation formula of 21 times 20 times 19 divided by 3 factorial. Now, a reminder, 3 factorial is what? 3 factorial is 6. Okay, or let me, let me leave it as 3 factorial here. Okay, and we know that 3 factorial was equal to what? 6. Okay, and here we have 21 times 20 times 19. Okay, no division by 3 factorial. Okay, remember, if we had the group of three people, the Michael Jordan, uh, President of the United States, and Russell Wilson, okay, there were three options for first, there were two options for second, and there was one option for third. Three times two times one gave a total of six ways. There were six ways that we could arrange this group of three, okay? Notice, do you see that in the combination formula, or we can write three times two times one as what? Three factorial. Notice that in the combination formula, we had 21 times 20 times 19 divided by 3 factorial. So do you see that the combination formula is 6 times smaller than the permutation formula? Notice that in the permutation formula, we are not dividing by the 3 factorial. What this means is that the permutation formula is 3 factorial times larger or 6 times larger than the combination formula. Okay? What's happening? Combination is dividing out. In combination, you're dividing out the possible arrangements within the group. Okay? Meaning that dividing by the 3 factorial means that it does not matter whether Michael Jordan is first, the president is second, and Russell Wilson is third. It does not matter how they're standing. Okay? But when you do not divide out the 3 factorial and you just have 21 times 20 times 19, now all of a sudden it matters where they're standing. First place, second place, and third place, there's assignment of position. You say, I'm looking at this and I have no clue what you are doing. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to show you some more examples here. But I want you guys to see what the formulas represent. What I need you to see right now is combination represents what? Combination represents group, okay? And permutation represents not only selection of a group, but also after we select the group, we have to assign position. So I need you guys to understand that combination, remain, combination calculates the number of groups, Permutation not only calculates how many groups, but also the assignment of position within the group. Now, let's look at a simple example. Okay? So I'm going to put up here. We're going to just see this. I'm going to diagram it out for you so that you can follow. We're going to look at here, 6. We have A, B, C, D, E. No, 5. We have 5, five, five people. Let's just do 5. A, B, C, D, E. Okay? And each of these represents, each letter represents a different person. So my question is, how many ways can we select three out of five groups? How many ways can we select three out of five in terms of group? All right, so we're saying that group would mean selecting A, B, C. If A, B, and C are standing in front of us, it does not matter how they're standing. A group is a group regardless. A committee of three people to represent our class. Okay, if I select a committee of three people, person A, come on up. Person B, come on up. Person C, come on up. You all stand up here. Okay. Okay. Three people standing to represent our class. Does it matter how they're standing? No. Okay. Three people are three people. A group of three is a group of three regardless of how they are arranged. So we're saying that ABC is the same as BCA, is the same as uh, BAC. It does not matter how you arrange this group. This group is the same as this group is the same as this group. Okay, I think we've already established this. So my question is, how many groups of three are there in five? Okay, so what does the combination formula say? Combination formula says that we can calculate the number of groups. Okay, how many total do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have five total, and we're selecting out groups of what? Groups of three. Okay, so combination of five choose three means we're selecting groups of three out of five. Five total to select from. So we set up the formula, five factorial over what? 
We'll start with our r factorial, which is 3 factorial, multiplied by now subtract the 2. 5 minus 3 is 2, so we get 2 factorial. And when we calculate this, we have 5 times 4 times where do we stop? We stop at the larger factorial. So we're going to stop at 3 factorial over, and we're going to write 3 factorial times, and we're going to take the smaller factorial and write it out, 2 times 1. Okay, now we're going to cancel our 3 factorials, and we're also going to cancel the smaller factorial with the remaining numbers. So we're going to cancel 2 with 4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. We do not write the 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we get 5 times 2 is a total of, there are 10 groups of 3 and 5. Watch this. I'm going to diagram this out. Okay, so if you really want to understand these things, you have to diagram them to get a visual or spatial understanding of what's going on. So let's see. I'm going to diagram this and show you that there are 10 groups of 3 and 5. So question, can we have group ABC? Absolutely. Okay, so ABC is our first group. I'm just going to... Okay. And what about ABD? Is ABD also a different group? Yes, this is a different group because I took C out, put D in. Remember, it does not matter whether I write ABD or BDA or et cetera, et cetera. Now, so we're now going to say we have ABC, we have ABD, what else? AB, ABE. Okay, now, could we also have uh, B, could we also have uh, BCD? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. We have AB, I'm sorry, ABC, ABD, ABE. We could also have A. C, D, we could have A, C, E, or we could have A, D, E, okay? Now, also we could have B, C, D, we could have B, C, E, and we could have also lastly C, D, E. Have we accounted for all the groups? Yes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, no, what am I missing? A, B, C, A, B, D, A, B, E, A, C, D, A, C, E, A, D, E. B, C, D, B, C, E. And B, D, E. I'm sorry. B, D, E. And then we have lastly C, D, E. Yeah. Okay, there it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 groups of 3 and 5. I made a mistake there. All right, now, so you see we have 10 different groups of 3 in 5. Now, my question now is how many ways can I give a first place, second place, and third place prize to, this, to 3 people in this group of 5? Okay, so looking at... This is a calculation of permutation. Why? Okay, assignment of position. Notice, if I say, how many ways can I give a first place prize, a second place prize, and a third place prize? Let me change it up, actually. Okay, how many ways? How many ways here? I'm just going to grab three different things. Okay, so we've got, we've got here, we've got, we've got, um, okay, we've got a remote control. We've got a remote control, we've got an eraser, and we've got a pen, or a marker. Okay, let's let these represent different prizes. Okay, so I'm going to go up to this group, A, B, C. Okay, could I give A the remote, B the, uh, B the eraser, and C the marker? Yes, that's one outcome. Okay, now, could I also give, could I also give A the marker, I'm sorry, A the eraser, B the remote, and C the marker? Yes, okay, is that a different outcome? Yes, it's a different outcome. Okay, so I say, all right, person A gets the remote, person B gets the eraser, and person C gets the marker. What if I switch these around, okay? And I say, person A gets the marker, person B gets the remote, person C gets the eraser. Is this a different outcome? Yes, it's a different outcome. Why? Because the prizes are what? The prizes are different. The prizes are different. So if I rearrange the prizes among the three people, we have different outcomes, okay? Why? Because the prizes are different. This is the same as same. This is the same as saying uh, assigning first place, second place, or third place. Okay? Assigning different prizes to the group of three is the same as assigning first, second, and third place. Assignment of different prizes or assignment of awards okay, is assignment after selection. So with permutation, not only are we selecting a group of three, notice how many groups of three are there in five? Okay, hopefully you say there's ten. Okay, there's ten groups of three in five. And after we have groups of three, okay, so permutation is going to calculate that there are ten groups of three and five, and also we're going to take every group of three and assign position within the group. So going back to if we have three people, 
selected. For instance, we have ABC, this group. Okay? If we have the group ABC, now all of a sudden, if we assign different prizes, is ABC different from, uh, let's call this here. The first one was the marker, for instance. The second one was the eraser, and the third one was the remote. Okay, so could we have could we have A gets the marker, B gets the eraser, and C gets the remote? Yes. Could we also have could we also have uh, A here? Let's do it like this. Let's go up. We've got remote, marker, and we've got eraser. Okay. Could could A get the could A get the uh, remote, B get the marker, and C get the eraser. Yes. Could we have A getting the remote, C getting the marker, and B getting the eraser? Yes. Could we have C getting the remote, A getting the marker, B getting the eraser, or C, B, A? Or what else could we have? We could have what else? We could have A first, C first, we could have B first, then C, then A, or we could have B, then A, then C. Okay, I'm trying to give you guys a visual here, all right, so that you guys can see. All right, there are six ways. Now, all of a sudden, the one group, ABC, can now be busted up into six different possibilities. So notice, how many possibilities do we have for this group? Okay, well, well, now we have what? Six. And how many possibilities for this group? We have six. And how many possibilities for this group? We have six. And this group, six. And six. Every group has how many possibilities? Six. And six. And six. Okay, so every group has six possibilities. Now, if you tell me there's ten groups, and each group has six possibilities, then we can say what? Ten groups times six possibilities, okay, we can do just multiplication. Ten times six gives what? Sixty. There are sixty possibilities here. So the permutation formula will calculate, permutation formula will actually calculate not only the number of groups, but also the ways that we can assign within the group. Okay, so it's going to be an answer of 60. Our permutation formula, permutation 5 choose 3, is going to give us an answer of 60. Watch this. So we're going to have 5 factorial on top, and on the bottom we have 5 minus 3. 5 minus 3 is what? 2 factorial. So we get 5 times 4 times 3 times what? 2 factorial over 2 factorial. What happens? 2 factorial cancel with 2 factorial. 5 times 4 is 20 times 3 is what? 60. So we get a total of 60 different ways that we can assign first, second, and third place. I always tell students this. Here, permutation. Permutation is common sense. Permutation is common sense. Okay. Uh, how is it common sense? Watch. Okay. So this is a trick that you can use for permutation problems. If you see that there's assignment, this is the trick. Common sense. Okay, let's think. All right. We want to select how many people out of that group. Okay, we want to select three people out of this group of five. There's a total of five people in the group. We want to select three people, and we want to assign first place, second place, and third place. Okay, so question. Here's first, here's second, and here's third. If we just look at the group of five, okay, how many options for first? Well, you have five options for first. And how many options, if we choose first place, how many options do we have for second? Well, we only have four. Okay? And after we choose second, we only have, what, three options for third. Five times four is 20 times three gives, there it is, 60 ways that we can award first, second, and third place to this group of five. Okay? Common, combination is not intuitively obvious. Okay, with combination, if I said, how many ways can you select a group of three, just a group, where there does not matter within the group, okay, there's no order within the group. It doesn't matter how they're standing or how they're arranged. Here, let me say it like this, here. I've got three markers. Here, let's do it like this. I've got three markers. Now let's assume one of these is blue, but let's just assume all three of these are black markers. All three of these markers are brand new. They're brand new black markers. Okay, so I have three people standing here. Okay, and I say here, person A, you get a black marker, person B, you get a black marker, and person C, you get a black marker. So here, each person gets a black marker. Okay, what if I switch the markers? What if I switch the markers? No, you get this black marker, you get this black marker, and you get this black marker. Okay, what if I'm switching the markers among this group of three? Is this going to be a different outcome? Okay, okay, A, you get this black marker, B, you get this black marker, and C, you get this black marker. No, it's not going to matter. Why? Because the prizes are what? The prizes are the same. There's no difference in the way that I arrange these among the three. Okay, so going back to this, if I'm asking how many ways how many ways can I give three of the same prize to this, 
to these five people. That's the same as saying how many groups of three are there in five. Why? Because the prizes are the same. You can think of combination as a, giving out same prize, same prizes to a group. Okay? Permutation, you can think of this as different prizes are awarded. Okay? Prizes are different. Combination, prizes are the same. Okay? So how many ways can we give three prizes to this group that are the same? Or, how many groups of three can be selected out of five? Watch. One, two, three. This is not common sense. You have five options for the first person. You have four options for the second. You have three options for the third. But this is going to be too big. This is going to give 60. We know that the answer is only 10 groups. So what do you have to do here? You have to divide out. You have to divide out. This is hard to see. You have to divide out the possibilities of arrangement. Okay, you have to divide out these six combinations. All of a sudden, these six combinations are reduced are these six different outcomes, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be using the word combination, these six different outcomes are reduced to how many outcomes? A, B, C, A, C, B, C, A, B are all reduced to what? One group. A, B, C is the same as any of these. So we have to divide by the number of arrangements of the group. How many people are in the group? There are three people in the group. So we're going to divide by three factorial for the number of arrangements in the group. Divide this out. We get 60 divided by 6, which is what? 10. This is harder to see. This is not common sense. Combination is not common sense. Okay. So I've diagrammed these out for you a couple times. All right. Now, let's look at some problems out of the book. See if we can put some sense to this. Problem number... I'm trying to hope this video doesn't go too long. Problem number... Uh, 17 on page P14. So we're on page here. Page P14. Problem number 17 says, I'm just going to read it. You guys should be following along on page P14 of your textbook. Problem number 17 says that the manager of a softball team has seven possible players in mind for the top four spots in the lineup. How many ways can she choose the top four spots? Okay, there are seven players to choose from, and she wants to select four spots to make a batting lineup. She wants to select four players out of the seven to make a batting lineup. The question is, how many batting lineups can be made? Okay, how many ways can she choose the top four spots? Now, if we think for a moment, uh, how many are there to choose from? Well, there are seven people total. Okay, and how many is she selecting? She's selecting four. Remember, the larger number always goes first. At least think it this way. There's a 50-50 chance that you get it right. You have to decide whether this is permutation or combination. Now, are we focusing on the seven or are we focusing on the four? Hopefully, you can say we're focusing on the small group, the group that's being selected out. We're asking within these four, is there assignment of position within the group? Okay, are the prizes different? Are the prizes different or are the prizes the same? Okay. Is there assignment or is there no assignment? Okay. Is this a group? Or are we not only selecting a group but assigning position within the group? So notice, she has to select a group of four. Okay. But is there assignment of position within the group of four? Yes. Why? She's going to assign what? Batter one, batter two, batter three, and batter four. For instance, if I put up here seven players, let's let A, B, C, D, E, F, G represent seven players. Okay, not only does she have to, not only does this manager have to select a group of four players, okay, say she selects group A, B, C, D, she then has to make the batting lineup. She says, well, we can have A as batter one, B as batter two, C as batter three, and D as batter four. Is this different from B batter one? A batter 2, D batter 3, and C batter 4. Yes. Is there assignment of position within the group of 4? Yes, there's assignment of position. So what do we have here? We have permutation. So we have permutation 7 choose 4, and you can calculate the number of ways to, or how many batting lineups she can make. So 7P4, we have what? 7 on top, 7 factorial over what? And on the bottom, subtract these. 7 minus 4 is what? 3 factorial. So we get 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times stop where we don't want to write 3 times 2 times 1. We write what? 3 factorial over what? 3 factorial what cancels? The 3 factorials cancel. We're left with 7 times 6 is 42 times 20. 42 times 20 is 840. Okay, so we get 840 possibilities. 840 possibilities for batting lineups. Now, let's go to the next question. So really, what you guys have to do, and this kind of becomes very simple. I say this to my... To, to students, okay, 
So you know how you can probably come to a you can probably figure out whether it's permutation or combination. You can come to an answer. But to fully understand these things, it takes a lot of practice with diagramming. When I got to college, okay, my professor said, here, now we get into advanced statistics. You have to calculate difficult probabilities. And actually, these counting methods, permutation and combination, other methods of counting, allow us to calculate probability and odds. Okay, what are the odds of you winning the lottery? How do we ca how, why do we even have a lottery? Well, what does it make? It makes money, okay? So these people figure out, well, if we charge people a dollar to play, okay, it's, it, people are, we're going to make, we're going to make a billion dollars before we have to pay out a million. We make a billion before we have to pay out a million. Why? Because the probability that someone wins is very low, okay? So with probability, we can have lotteries. We can do other things like figure out the probability or the likelihood of you getting in an accident. How much do we have to charge for insurance and things of this nature? Statistics and probability is super important for industry. Okay, how much do we charge a person so that we make money off of them? but still afford to pay for any accidents that may occur. Okay, insurance companies have to calculate probabilities and what's used for this permutation combination. And it's hard to understand. So when you're demanded to calculate difficult probabilities, what do you have to really understand? You have to understand how to count. And if you want to fully understand this, what do you have to do? You have to practice diagramming things. Okay, and this can take a very long time to start getting a visual or spatial understanding of what's actually happening here. And that takes some work. Okay, so I encourage you guys, if you want to learn these things, to go home and diagram. Practice diagramming. I encourage this. Now, the next problem says, we're just going to have to speed this up. The next problem says, a newspaper has nine reporters available to cover four different stories. How many ways can reporters be assigned, keyword, keyword, assigned, there it is, assignment. Okay, the problem says, a newspaper has nine reporters available to cover four different stories. How many ways can reporters be assigned to cover the stories? The word assignment is there. So we ask first, how many total are there to choose from? Well, there's nine total. Okay, and how many are being selected? Well, there are four that are going to be selected. So we put the four second. That's again, 50-50 shot. Is this permutation or is this combination? Well, the word assignment kind of gives it away. This is a permutation. And let me show you in terms of diagram. We're looking at number 18. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So we have nine reporters. Nine reporters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, nine reporters. And we're going to select how many? We're going to select four. And these four reporters are going to be assigned to cover four different stories. So question. Uh, we're selecting four, but is there assignment of position? Yes, we're assigning to stories. I'll show you. Okay, so we first have to select what? Group. We first have to select a group of four. So say we select reporters A, B, C, D. Okay, now we have story one, story two, story three, and story four. Okay, we have to assign these reporters to the stories. So could we have reporter A assigned to story one, reporter B assigned to story two, reporter C assigned to story three, and reporter D assigned to story four? Yes. Are the prizes different or the same? Now, you may not think this is a prize. It's not a prize to, to be assigned to write a story, okay, but... In terms of prize or difference, yes, there is difference of position. Prizes are different here. Okay, so reporter A with story one, reporter B with story two. Is this different than putting reporter B with story one, reporter A with story two, reporter C, uh, D with story three, and reporter C with story four? Yes, this is different. Okay, so we're looking at assignment of the reporters to the story. So this is permutation or assignment of position. So we have to use permutation formula here. We have what? In this case, 9 factorial over, on the bottom, subtract the 2. 9 minus 4 is what? 5 factorial. We end up with 9 times 8 times 7 times... Where are we stopping? Where are we stopping? We're stopping where? At 5 factorial. Why? Because 5 factorial will cancel at the bottom. Okay, so 5 factorial... We don't want to write 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Again, are we canceling 5 with 5? No, we are canceling 120 with 120. And I told you guys to memorize that. 9 times 8 is 72. 7 times 6 is 42, so we get 72 times 42. You guys should reduce this to one multiplication problem. 7 times 6 is 42, 9 times 8 is 72, Oop, 42. Okay, and we multiply this. This gives 144 and 288. We add, we get 4, 2, 0, 3. Okay, so we get 3,024. So total is 3,024 ways. 3,024 ways. Uh, for the reporters to be assigned to the stories. It's a huge number, okay, so big numbers. Now, go to the next question. On the next question, it says, 
Uh, Jack has a reading list of 12 books. How many ways can he select nine books to check out in the library? He has a reading list of 12. He has a reading list of 12 books. How many ways can he select nine books to check out in the library? So we have 12 total to choose from. He's got 12 total to choose from. How many ways can he select nine out of 12? Now this one will really actually blow your mind. Okay, so how many ways can you select 9 out of 12? Well, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Let's say there's one, here's, there's 12 books. Book, the first book starts with the letter A, the second book starts with the letter B, the third book on the list starts with the letter C, so we can just think in terms of each letter represents a book. And he's going to the library, you have to decide whether this is permutation or comment. He wants to select 9 out of 12. My question is, is there assignment of position? Now, which one do we focus on? Do we focus on the 12 or the 9? Hopefully you say at this point we're focusing on the small group of the 9. So we're selecting how many books? He's selecting a group of 9 books. Is there assignment of position within the books? Okay, think of it like this. He's holding a bag of books. Okay, he's got all the books in the bag. Is it going to matter if he puts book 1 in the middle and the middle book on top? Do we still have the same set of books? Okay, we're talking what? We're talking group. All right, there's no assignment within the books. Is this group of nine books, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, is this the same selection as if he rearranges the books? B, A, C, D, F, E, G, I, H. If he rearranges the books, does he still have the same nine books that he's checking out in the library? Yes. We're talking group here. And what is the key word for combination? Group. So that what we're asking here is how many groups of nine are there in 12? Okay, to calculate the number of groups of 9 there are in 12, this is combination. Take a quick guess. How many groups of 9 are there in 12? How many groups of 9 are there in 12? But this will blow your mind, okay? How many groups of 9 are there in 12? Look, we have 12 factorial over, 12 factorial over, well, uh, on the bottom we start with our R, 9 factorial, times, now subtract the 2, 12 minus 9 is what? 3 factorial. So we get 12 times 11 times 10 times what? times 9 factorial over, we're going to stop where? We're going to stop at the larger factorial of the denominator because we don't want to write 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. On the bottom we have 9 factorial multiplied by what? Take your smaller factorial and write it out. 3 times 2 times 1. Cancel your 9 factorials. Now, did we cancel 9 with 9? No. We canceled a huge number with a huge number. Okay, now, cancel 3 with 12. 3 with 12 divided each by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Did we write the 1? No. This is redundant. Okay? And three, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, cancel 2 with the 10. 2 divided by 2 is 1. We don't write the 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Reminder, when you cancel the 9 factorials, you also got 1 and 1. We did not write that. Okay? Lastly, we have 4 times 5 is 20 times 11 is 220. There are 220 groups of 9 in 12. Watch this. Let me just kind of give you an idea here. Okay, could we take the I out? Could we take the book I out and replace it with J? Yes. Okay, here, let me put it back. Could we take book H out and replace it with J? Yeah, that would be a different group. Could we take book G out and replace it with J? Yeah, could we take F out and replace it with J? Yes, could we take E out and replace it with J? Yeah, every time we take one out and replace it with a different book, do we have a different outcome or a different group? Yes. Now my question is, could we take E out and replace it with J? Take F out and replace it with K? Yes. Could we take E out and replace it with J? Take B out and replace it with K? Yes. Could we take I out and replace it with L? Take A out and replace it with K? Yes. There's a lot of ways this can happen, guys. A lot of ways. In fact, there are 220 groups of 9 and 12. <clears throat> Just blows your mind. Okay, now, last question. Last question. I think this one kind of brings it to life. Okay, so a band. A band is still choosing three backup singers. Okay, so a band wants to select three new backup singers from a group of 18 singers who try out. How many ways can the band choose the new singers? How many ways can the band choose the new singers? Okay, so there's 18 singers trying out. There are 18 singers trying out. The band wants to select how many? The band wants to select three. Okay, now my question is, I'm just going to erase this. Now we can just look at this. We have to determine permutation or combination. Are we focusing on the large or the small? Hopefully you say we're focusing on the small, the group of three. Is there a sign and a position within the group? Is there first place, second place, or third place? Is there three different prizes? I'm asking, are there three different prizes in the group? Is there a marker, a remote, and an eraser? Notice if we rearrange, these are different. Are there three different prizes within that group of three? No. Think about it. 
the band is selecting three singers. Okay, so if I walk and I select three, if I take a group of, if I, here, I have, I have 18. Okay, so I select three out of the 18. I select A, B, C. Okay, I select A, B, C out of the group. Okay, this group of three. Okay, A, you're a singer. B, you're a singer. C, you're a singer. Okay, come on up. A, you're a singer. B, you're a singer. C, you're a singer. Does it matter how I arrange the three singers? Okay, you're a singer, you're a singer, you're a singer. Okay, no matter who gets the prize, okay? It's the same as awarding three of the same prize. Here, you get a marker, you get a marker, and you get a marker. Okay, no, no, let's switch them. Okay, no, you get this marker, you get this marker. No, it does not matter. The prizes are the same. There's no assignment or difference within the group, okay? Since the prizes are the same, since we're awarding all three of them, singer, 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 we're talking a group of three, okay? So this is combination. Prizes are the same. So we use combination formula here. We have combination 18 choose 3 is the same as 18. We take the larger on top, 18 factorial, over... The small factorial first, I'm sorry, the, the R value first, 3 factorial, multiplied by, subtracted to, 18 minus 3 is what? 15 factorial. So we get 18 times 17 times 16 times what? 15 factorial over, we stop at the 15 because it's a larger, we get 3 times 2 times 1 times 15 factorial. So we cancel the 15 factorials, we're left with what? 1 and 1. Do we write the 1s? No. 3 cancels at 18, leaving a 9. 2 cancels with 16, leaving 8. 8 times 9 is 72, times 17 is 720, 90, 12, here, 9 times 8 is 72, times 17, 720, 490, it's 11, 20, 12, 10, uh, 1224. Let's see, 7 times 2 is 4, 24, 31, 49, 50, and 2, and 7. So we get what? 4, 2, 12, 24. Something's wrong with this. What did I do wrong? 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 factorial over 3 factorial times 15 factorial. These cancel. 3 cancels 18, leaving a 6. I knew something was wrong with my calculations. Okay, because I know it's not 12, 24. 3 cancels to 18, leaving what? A 6. Okay, so we get 6 times 8 is 48. So 48 times 17. I apologize. 7 times 8 is 50. I just moved too fast. I know what the answer is. I, I, I recognize the answers when I see them. 7 times 56 is 6 to the 5. 7 times 4 is 28 plus 5 is 33. We get an 8. We get a 4. We get a 6. 11 carried to 1. We get 8, 16. So the answer is what? The answer is 816. Now my question is, my question is how many ways, how many ways can we select here, this is different. You'll see the difference. Okay, combination is three singers, all same prize. How many ways can I select a guitar player, a piano player, and a drummer? How many ways can I select out of the same 18? Okay, out of the same 18, how many ways can I select a guitar player, a piano player, and a drummer? Look at the difference here. Okay, so I select a group. I select a group, A, B, C. Okay, how many ways can I select, or how many ways can I select a guitar player? So we have a group. A group of three has to be selected out of the 18. After we select a group of three, A, B, C, we have to assign guitar player, piano player, and drummer. Okay? So now, my question is, if A is the guitar player, B is the piano player, and C is the drummer, is that different than A is the guitar player, C is the piano player, and B is the drummer? Yes, because we have different positions within the group. So how many ways can we select a guitar player, piano player, and drummer? What do we have here? This is permutation. So we have permutation 18 choose 3 is what? 18 factorial over 18 minus 3 is what? 15 factorial. So we have 18 times 17 times 16 times what? 15 factorial over what? 15 factorial. These cancel. We get 18 times 17 times 16. Uh, 256, 260, 272. 272 times 18. Uh, 256. 266, 272, yeah, times 18, 8 times 2 is 6 and 6, carry the 1, 56, 57, 21, 2, 7, 2, 6, 9, 8, 4, 48, 96, 4,896 different ways this can happen, 4,896. All right, now, uh, there's one other type of problem we have to deal with before this video is done, okay, and this one is more common sense, all right, common sense. 
Uh, we do not use the formula, okay? But all of these problems that we're going to go over now are permutations, okay? What does permutation mean? A permutation means arrangement or assignment. So my question is this, and this is different. We're looking at permutation here. Permutation of objects. And this is what your SOL is going to focus on, guys. Permutation of objects in a line. Okay? Permutation of objects in a line. How many ways can you arrange seven things in a line? How many ways can you arrange seven objects in a line? Or let me ask this question. Look at number, look at number nine on page P14. How many ways can you arrange seven shoppers in a line at a checkout counter? Now, this one we don't use the formula. We use common sense. Now, I'm going to show you how this relates to the formula. Okay, how many ways can we arrange seven shoppers in a line at a checkout counter? My question is, if we put shopper A first here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You have seven shoppers in a line. Okay, is shopper A first, shopper B second, different than putting shopper B first, shopper, sh shopper A second, I'm saying so fast, E, E, F, G. Yes, this is different. This is a different outcome. Why? Because we're talking about how many ways can we can arrange the shoppers in the line. So A first, B second is different from B first, A second. So my question is here. In a line, we don't use the formula. We just think, okay, there's seven people in a line. Permutation of objects in a line. Make seven spaces on your paper. Okay, how many options do we have for the first shopper? Well, we have seven. Okay, now after we choose the first shopper, how many options do we have for the next shopper? We only have six. And then for the next, we have five. So seven times six times five times what? Four times three times two times one. Okay, what do we call this? How many ways can we arrange seven shoppers in a line? We call this seven factorial. Seven factorial we memorize to be what? 5,040. Here is where memorizing your factorials will come in handy. Okay, so there are 5,040 ways to arrange seven shoppers in a line at a checkout counter. Now we know that 7 factorial is 5,040. We also know that 18 factorial <laughs> is like a trillion. So when you go to Food Lion next time, you're standing in the line and you're bored, you can look at the 7 people standing in line and you can be like, I could arrange those 7 people 5,040 ways. Okay. But when you go to Walmart and you see 18 people standing in the line, uh, you can arrange those 18 people more than one trillion ways blows your mind. So it gives, gives you something to do while you're standing in line, but you can calculate the number of ways that people stand in the line. Uh, now, my question is, how many ways can we arrange the word math? Okay, how many ways can we arrange the word math? Okay, is this the same question as the shoppers in the line? Yes, it's the same question. Okay, so I just represented A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, or whatever for the shoppers. How many ways can we arrange the word math in the line? Again, is this a permutation? Yes, we're talking about arrangement. Okay, how many ways can you arrange four things in a line? It's the same thing with the word math. But let's diagram it out. Now, this one's a complicated diagram. We're going to write it all out. So we have the word math. I want you to see this for, for uh, a diagram with four different. Okay, so we could have M-A-T-H, we could have M-A-H-T. Now, notice, we kept A the same. We changed the T and the H to H-T. Now, we're going to leave M first. We're going to make T second. And we have AH. We're going to have MT. Now we're going to leave MT alone, change, and we have HA. So notice, have we, no, we've left M alone. Have we had A second and T second? Yes. Now we're going to do M. We're going to put H second. We're going to have TA, MH, then AT. Okay, so have we done all six possibilities for M being first? Yes. We had M with A second. We had M with T second, M with H second. Now the next diagram. Instead of M first, could we have A first? Yes, A-M-T-H. We could have A-M-H-T. Notice, has M been second? Yes, now we want T to be second. So we could have A-T-H-M, A-T-M-H. Now we've had M second, we've had T second. Now we need what? We need H second. So A-H-T-M, A-H, and switch the last two, M-T. So have we had M second, T second, and H second? Yes. Notice A was first all the way down. How many options for A first? Six. Notice. Now you can just generalize. Okay, so how many options did we have for, for M first? We had six. How many options did we have for A first? We had six. How many options are we going to have for T first? Well, we're going to have six for T first. And how many options are we going to have for H first? We're also going to have 6. Just add these. 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 24. So we have 24 ways that we can arrange the word math. I wanted you to see that diagram. Now, the quick way to do this is to say, well, in the word math, there are four letters. Okay, so how many options here? 
we'll write the word math. How many options for letter one? Well, we have four options for letter one, then how many options for letter two? We have then three. After we choose letter one, letter two, we only have two options, then we have one option. So four times three times two times one is the same as four factorial, which is what? 24. So there are 24 ways to arrange the word math. What I want you to see here is that this can be calculated as a permutation formula. Notice we are permutation. So we had how many letters in the word math? We had four letters to choose from, okay? And how many did we choose? Well, we chose all four. We chose all four letters, okay? We never left the letter out. So we have four and we're choosing four. Permutation four, choose four. I want you to calculate this for a moment. Permutation four, choose four. Let's see what happens here. And this will bring us back to our discussion in the last video. Notice we start with our larger. Well, these are the same. Four factorial over on the bottom. What do we do? We subtract. Four minus four gives what? Ah, oh, zero factorial. Now a question, what is zero divided by three? Okay, zero divided by three is what? Zero, okay? And what is three divided by zero? Remember when we have zero in the denominator, we call this indeterminate or undefined. I think indeterminate is proper. Uh, indeterminate is, is, I believe, proper. Uh, this makes no sense, okay? We cannot have zero in the denominator. Call this, I think they're right. Undefined is written in the book. Okay, undefined, but I don't think that's, I think indeterminate is correct. Uh, but can zero be on top? Yes, but can zero be in the denominator? No, look at this problem here. But remember from yesterday, what did we define zero factorial to be? We defined zero factorial to be one. Well, we didn't define it. What? The math people got together and defined this to be what? They defined it to be one. Okay, so this is fudge factor. Okay, this is, this is something that makes our formulas work. Why? Because we don't know what zero factorial even means. It makes no sense. So they said, well... <laughs> This formula works, and this formula works for our calculations, but if we, don't, if we have zero factorial in the denominator and we call zero factorial zero, then all of a sudden things don't make sense. Things don't make sense. Okay, so what did they say? Well, let's just, here, this will make our formulas work. Since we don't even know what this thing means, or it makes no sense, let's just call it one. Okay, this makes us happy. Okay, yay! You know, now the formulas work. Okay, so we have 4 factorial over what? 4 factorial over 1, which is just nothing more than 4 factorial. So the reason they do this, the reason they do this is, first off, 0 factorial doesn't even make sense. Okay, so it doesn't make sense in the first place. We're not worried about it. Uh, what happens when we come against it in our formulas that do work? The formulas work. It's actually calculate things. If we didn't, if we, def if we said 0 factorial were 0, then all of a sudden, these formulas are no good. These formulas, we just throw them out. We've got to come up with something else. Okay? Uh, so we, they decided to call it one. It's called definition. Okay? So you just accept this by faith. At this point, I don't know if you're still okay with this. Okay? It took me a long time to try to get to the point where I accepted something like this. And I understand now why. Okay? It's because the concept math is to get things done. Okay? To, we, we use math to solve the problem. To build the building, okay? The building's going to sway in the wind, okay? It goes back to the concept of this. Is my hand actually touching the wall? No. There's an infinite amount of space. We've talked about that. But let's get over it. Will my hand, will my hand move? Well, this wall is, is, is just leaning. This is a whiteboard that I have to kind of set up. But will my hand open a door? Yeah, it's not actually touching the door, but will it open the door? Yes. I'm mostly empty space, but... But can I move things? Yes. Okay, I can get things done. So in terms of math getting things done for us, let's just get over it. So the concept is get over it. We're just going to call 0 factorial 1. 4 factorial gives us 4 factorial over 1 gives us 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 24 ways we can arrange the word math. Almost done. Okay, so lastly, lastly, we have to figure out the number of ways to calculate. How many ways can we calculate? Or I'm sorry, how many ways can the word Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, be arranged? How many ways can we arrange the word Mississippi? Okay, well, we count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 11 things in a line. Okay, so how many ways can we arrange things in a line? Remember, arrangement is permutation. How many ways can we arrange things in a line? Hopefully you say now, well, you can have 11 options times 10 options times 9 options times 8 options. Hopefully you say this is 11 factorial. If you write 11 factorial on your paper, this is wrong. Okay, there's more work to do than just this. Notice. Let me write it again. M I S S I S S I P P I. Do you guys see? Do you guys see that I rearranged the S's? Okay, do you see that I rearranged the S's? Just say yes. Just say yes. Do you see that I rearranged the I's? Yes. Do you see that I rearranged the P's? Yes. Okay, yes, I rearranged them, but my question is yes. 
Yes, I rearranged the S's. Okay, which one? Okay, which one? Okay, so that's my question. Which S is which S? Okay, is this S this S? Nope, wrong, wrong, wrong. No, I put this S here, and I put this S. No, I'm just joking, I'm joking. Okay, so how many, okay, did I rearrange the S's? Okay, let's just say I rearranged, for some reason, the S's. I rearranged the I's, rearranged the P's. Okay, my question is, is this word a different outcome from this word? No, <laughs> to the I, it appears exactly the same. So it doesn't matter. This is where permutation meets combination. The concept, if it doesn't matter how we're standing in a group. Okay, and this is all, again, very difficult to visually or spatially understand. I'm just going to show you how to do this. So just accept this for now. Okay, there are four S's. Just like we divided out the factorial of the arrangements in the group in the combination formula. Remember, in the combination formula, we divide out the factorial of the arrangements. Since we have four that are alike, it doesn't matter how we arrange the S's. We're going to divide by four factorial for the S's. Now, notice, how many I's do we have? We have one, two, three, four matching I's. So we're going to divide by four factorial for the matching I's. And lastly, we have two P's. So we're going to divide by what? Two factorial for the matching P's, leaving us a calculation of 11 here, I'm going to show you how to do this easily. We have 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. Where are we going to stop? We're going to start at the, stop the largest factorial of the number. Stop at 4 factorial over, over 4 factorial times, now write the others out, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. Now, why? Because we're going to cancel those other factorials. We're going to cancel first, though, the 4 factorial with the 4 factorial. We cancel 24 with 24. Now, I want you guys to notice a little trick here. Do you guys see that 3 times 2 is 6? Okay. And 3 times 2 is 6. So can we cancel 6 with 6? Yes. Okay. Notice, is 4 times 2 8? Yes. So we're going to cancel... We're going to cancel the 4 times 2, which is 8, with the 8, okay? And what is left? Nothing but 1s. And we're left with 11 times 10 times 9, which is 990. Okay, 11 times 10 times 9 is 990, multiplied by 7 times 5, which is 35, okay? So we get 990 times 35, which gives uh, 549, uh, 0, so I'm carrying the 2, and 27, 29, 0, 5, 6, carry the 1, let's see, 14, 1, 34,650 ways. There's 34,650 ways to arrange the word Mississippi, okay? And one more, so we look at the word, we look at the word intercept. We look at the word intercept. We look at the word intercept, okay? This is problem number... Problem number 10 on page P14, okay? The arrangement of the letters of the word intercept, okay? Uh, how many letters are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 letters, so we're going to say that this is, what, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, so 9 factorial. And do we have any that match? Yes, we have 2 matching E's, so we're going to divide by 2 factorial for the matching E's. And we have 2 matching T's, so we're going to divide by 2 factorial for the matching T's. We're going to put 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. Well, here. Show you a trick here. Show you a trick here. Watch this. This is faster. I want you to write 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. This is faster. Have we memorized? Why are we stopping here? Have we memorized 7 factorial? Yes, we've memorized 7 factorial. Now I want you, have we memorized 2 factorial? Yes, 2 factorial is 2. So we have 2 times 2, which gives what? 4. Watch this. Does 4 cancel with 8? There's many, many, many ways to cancel this, guys. Yes, 4 cancel with 8, leaving what? 2. So we have less than 9 times 2 is 18 times 7 factorial. Okay, so we have 18, 7 factorial is 5,040. So we get 5,040 times what? 18, which gives what? 40,320 and 5,040. Oh, uh, 0, 32 and 40, yeah. So, yeah, 5, so we get 0, 2, 7, 0, 9, 90,720 ways. There are 90,720 ways to arrange the word intercept. And with that, that concludes our lesson. If you guys are still, you know, you rewatch this video maybe two or three times possible. I don't know. It's a long video. And try to understand this. Okay. Don't, it comes to a point where don't get too frustrated. Okay. We're going to review this later this semester. These things take time. But hopefully today you've got the concept that permutation, don't watch the video three times. One time is enough. 
Uh, if you need to go back and refer to different things, just fast forward to certain points in the video. Okay? I don't want you guys spending all your time watching videos, but rather practice, practice, practice. If you come to a point where you've watched it and you still don't understand it and you've tried to practice and you're struggling, I will help you. Okay? I will individually come and help you guys see what you're doing wrong. But uh, again, combination is what? Combination means group. And permutation is not only selection of group, but also what? Assignment of position within the group. So hopefully that helps, and good luck with your homework, guys.